video we're going to continue our exploration into the polar form and we're going to be converting between rectangular form and polar form all right so we're going to express the polar form and the rectangular form of a complex number and how they're related so the first one we're going to talk about is how we can relate z equals to 5 so this is 3 pi over 4 and that's a pi it's a weird looking pi but it's a pi so first we need to identify the values of r and theta so first step r is equal to 5 theta is equal to 3 pi over 4 all right, then what we need to do is we need to identify the A's and the B's. So in our case, A is going to equal five cosine, because again, C is for the cosine, three pi over four. And B is going to equal five I sine three pi over four. All right, so the next step is to identify cosine three pi over four. Again, this goes back into the unit circle. Pi over four in the first quadrant is square root of two over two. Three pi over four happens to be in the second quadrant, which, so I'm gonna put Q2 so I can remember. In Q2, Y is positive, um, X is negative. So that means that sine is positive, cosine is negative. So if we're looking at a reference angle of pi over four, is my reference angle, which it's gonna be square root of two over two, square root of two over two. When I look at my a's here, my a is going to equal five. Again, in quadrant two, my cosines are negative, so that's gonna be negative root two over two, or five root two over two. And negative don't forget the negative I'm going to use orange for B so B is going to equal so again sine in quadrant 2 which is where 3 pi over 4 is is going to be positive so we're looking at 5 I times root 2 over 2 which is going to be 5 root 2 over 2 I and I forgot the I in there All right, so now we can express this in the coordinate plane. And the whole reason I have this graph here is because we will graph it. So the new equation in the rectangular plane is going to be negative 5 root 2 over 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2. And this is going to be an estimate because this is 5 times 0.707. Um, which is 3.55, roughly 535, which means, oh, I forgot the i here again, plus 3.535i. Each one of these blocks is going to, I think I'm gonna do each two blocks. We'll represent that so we could get a little bit further. Um, use, I'm gonna use a dark blue here. So three and a half, both directions, one, two, no, one, two, three and a half. Actually, this would be easy. Wait, what am I at here? Making so many dots. It's going to be this third dot that I made. Because again, every other dot, and it's going to be a little bit off the three and a half, but I'm just going to use that intersection as a reference. Because it's not exactly three and a half, it's 3.53. And so this looks something, this looks something like this. That did not go as expected. I was hoping that I would swing out from that point, but it did not. All right, 
scoot this over a little bit right there do a little hashtags going down just to show and so this is again root five and I'm just going to double check that five times two take the square root of that divide by two I think I get 3.543 so we're looking at this point right here with this guy right here being five this measurement right here five root two over two and this measurement right here, right here five root two over two that one's the negative one all right so there we go we went from rectangular to um, or sorry from polar to rectangular all right so let's look at an, another example of this and hopefully my drawing will be a little bit better i mean you guys have seen all my drawings sometimes they're not better so how do you express z equals negative 7 minus 4i? Again, here looking at the graph, I'm going to use each one of these as 1 for the 7. 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're looking at a point down here. This is perfect. Do something like this. Try to get it as close as I can. There we go. So we're looking at this guy. I do need to know the hypotenuse here because that is going to be our R. So we're looking at negative 7, negative 4 here. And so the graph looks something like this. I need to know my angle. Use this red. This is something I need to know is theta. And I also need to know my radius here. So I'm going to take the modulus of this. Um, R equals the modulus of C. R is going to equal the square root of negative 7 minus 4i times negative 7 plus 4i. And we got R equal to square root of 65. I'm going to keep that exact. Just for right now. We'll probably convert it into decimal in a little bit. Now I need to find the theta. I need to find this, this um, angle. So I'm going to use tangent because I'm given the adjacent and the hypotenuse for this little circle. So basically I know I could find the reference angle here, alpha. So I'm going to use tangent of alpha, which is the reference angle. This is not the actual theta angle. Know that we're going to do 180 plus alpha once we find alpha. So this is going to equal negative 4 divided by negative 7. Again, opposite over adjacent. Um, undo the tangent. I'm going to have to take the inverse. So 10 inverse. Oh, not inverse. I'm um, sorry. No, yeah, inverse. 10 inverse. So now what we're seeing is that alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of 4 sevenths. And this comes out to be in radians because we're looking at radians we use radians in the last example we're going to continue on that radians which is going to be 0 0.52 roughly and since this is my reference angle i'm going to add 180 degrees or pi i should have said pi plus alpha which is going to be which is going to be theta roughly 3.66 radians. Again, because this right here is pi in the unit circle, so we're adding the alpha to that pi. 
basically because we're in quadrant three. So after all this, my polar coordinates, and I'm going to make this in this rosy pink, my polar coordinate Z is going to equal the square root of 65 cis uh, 3.66. All right, and there we go. We convert it now from rectangular to polar. All right, so in the triads, you need to try to see if you, um, what you understand, what you don't understand. And if you guys have any questions, um, always feel free to ask. And yes, you can change that root 65 into the, pol uh, into the uh, decimal form. I just, again, wanted to be more precise, but the decimal form of that is 8.06 roughly. Um, but you can change that. It's all on your preference. Again, I prefer if I can in any place that I can to be as exact when it makes sense to be exact. And the square root of 65 isn't really hurting anybody. So I'd rather it be exact. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, always feel free to ask and I'll catch you in the next video.